Welcome back coding champions. Congratulations on completing episode 1 of a DSA in Python series. You already made great strides and I'm thrilled to see your progress. So in this episode, we're diving even deeper into Python. We'll explore how Python stands out from other programming languages, understand what an interpreter does and get a solid grasp on Python's data types and basic functions. So get ready to continue your coding journey with new insights and hands-on practice. So keep up the fantastic work and let's dive into episode 2. So how is Python different from other programming languages? First is simple and readable syntax. So Python uses indentation to define code blocks instead of curly braces, making it highly readable. And next is dynamic typing. So Python allows variables to change types dynamically without declaring them explicitly. Next is high level language. Python abstracts many details like memory management, making it easier to learn compared to lower level languages like C. Next is interpreter language. Python executes code line by line, which allows quick testing and feedback without the need for the compilation. So next is extensive libraries. So Python has a rich set of libraries for various applications like web development, data science and automation. So comparing with other languages. So firstly, what we have is Python versus C++. So here, simpler syntax and easier memory management in Python, but C++ offers more control over the performance, right? So our next is Python versus Java. So here Python is interpreter language. We know that uh, just we discussed here, right? So, but Java is compiled and has stricter syntax. So Python versus JavaScript. Python is widely used in backend and data science while JavaScript dominates the frontend development. So mostly this JavaScript is used in frontend development. So what is interpreter? An interpreter reads and executes code line by line. So making it different from compiled languages, which convert code into machine language before execution. So what are the benefits of this? So first is quick prototyping. So Python's interpreted nature allows for the quicker iteration of code without a compilation step. Next is instant feedback. So errors are caught during the execution, making debugging easier. Comparison. So compiled languages, example C++ require compilation before execution which make the code faster but introduces an additional step in the development process. So that's all about the Python's features and interpreter. So let's look into Python data types. So what are data types? As the name says, it's just a type of data. So firstly, we have the text type, that is string. So here, this represents the sequence of characters, example, hello world. Here, as we see, hello world is a sequence of characters. So if you type type of s, it gives a string, str. So basically, str is a string. So if you type just this one, this like, this is also a string. So basically, single character is also a string, uh, right? If it enclosed in this one. So next is numeric types. So firstly, we have integer. So integer is something just like as tried as like we don't have much precision. So like 42. It's like if we have 42.4, something like that, it's a float. Floating point values are just like with the integer with more precision, we can say. So basically, it's like a decimal point number. So uh, next is complex numbers. So complex numbers are the numbers with the real and imaginary parts. So if, example, we have this one plus two J. So let's uh, ha have this type of one plus two J. We'll see it is a complex. So yeah, it's complex. Hope you got idea about the strings and numeric types. And next let's go to the sequence types. So what is sequence? The, as the name says, it's just like set a uh, set of values. It's not a single value. So first we have is ordered mutable collection. So that is what is ordered here. So it preserves the order of insertion uh, into the list. So let's say we have this uh, S is equals to one, two, three. This is uh, this how we represent list, okay? One, two, three. So we have, it's called list. So we can check it using type of S. So that is uh, list here. So if we check the order, like it is same. So for I in S, this just we using loops here for i in s uh, print i it this is the order of insertion so order is sorry it should be i uh, i just print I, s here so it's i so it's one two three so just this is the order so next is ordered immutable collection so what is mutable and immutable so basically mutable is something which can change uh, you can assign it to the different uh, like number so let's say we want assign s of zero so indexing is how we access the elements in the list so basically this is a set of values right like uh, like if you want to like hold a lot of values together in a single variable you use a list so in this if you want to access the first element uh, we start the indexing starts with zero so s of zero is what like we let's print s of zero 
so that would be 1 so let's say we want to assign s of 0 is equals to minus 1 now s of 0 would be changed that is minus 1 so this is called mutability so immutable is something which can't be changed so tuple is just like a immutable version of list we can say that so tuple is represented by the uh, like this braces 1 2 3 okay that is square brackets this is just like normal braces and then uh, here we represent uh, the type using type of s we can say it is tuple so here this is also ordered so for i in s we'll say print i so yeah this order is preserved so here we talked about something immutability right so let's check this so we access the first element using s of 0 right firstly let's just uh, print uh, s of 0 so that you will get a clarity uh, print s of 0 so s of 0 is 1 so let's say we try to do s of 0 is equals to minus 1 like as we did with list it gives error so tuple doesn't support this item assignment so basically we can't change the tuple once it's created so so next is range so range is also a immutable sequence of numbers so basically a range under uh, sequence type so we can define range as we said like uh, start and end and step also we can do so let's do this range uh, here so this is uh, like we can represent the type of range it gives range so here range is also the immutable thing we can't change the uh, uh, objects once it is assigned so we print s of 0 we get 0 let's say we do s of 0 is equal to minus 1 so it also says that doesn't support item assignment so basically it's also the same thing but this is a immutable sequence of numbers this is sequence like you can form a sequence you don't need to the difference between the uh, tuple and this one is like you don't need to define all like uh, 0 to 10 you can just say 0 to 10 and you have all the numbers defined here so let's say like for for example we say uh, for i in s print i so it will print all the way along 9 see very simple right here we just have to for tuple we have to define every number for range it it like automatically gets the range so if you want to have a step number then it increments plus 2 for each thing 0 to 8 so until in that range it continues so yeah this we already discussed about stepping operator uh, and then here we have mapping types so basically uh, mapping types is unordered collection of key value pairs so example here the key is name and value is allies so here uh, the same for a is its key and value is 25 so it can't like here we see uh, let's define some like we, we call it dictionary so let's say dish d is equals to this one so print d how does it prints so like this this is a dictionary right so now we can say type of d it is dict which is dictionary so how to access this keys so we need to specify d of name then it will print allies if we say d of ace it would print 25 basically this key is values is mapped to this one name maps to allies and ace maps to 25 so this is the dictionary so this is also an unordered collection of key value space means that it can't preserve the order which the insertion is done so next is set types so basically set is also an unordered collection of unique elements so here uh, you can't have duplicates in set so let's say s is equals to set we can define set using this also s is equal to set and then uh, it's just an empty set type of s it's a set so now we can also initialize this set using one two three now we'll say print s it's just like s uh, is a set print s now we can see the set is printed let's say type of s we'll see the set so we'll also can define set using this s is equals to set of one two three so yeah so basically uh, print s we passing a set inside set actually we can pass list as well 
it will also convert is just type castings from list to set so if we say type of us it would be set so next is frozen set so this is the immutable version of set example we can define it as a frozen set of this one like this so let's say type of s we assign it to something type of s is a frozen set it means to say that we can't remove anything from the set so basically we type uh, s dot uh, copy like, like if it is just a set okay we can we, we can remove this uh, example one so we can remove one from the set then what is the set actually it would be now so let me add another code block since we removed one we have only two three so remove is by the way the method we'll, we'll dive into that later so now let's take in the case of a uh, frozen set so t is equals to frozen set so here we have t and it's a frozen set so if we try to do something like remove and one here it would give an error so frozen set has no attribute remove so basically we can't modify it once the set is created that is a frozen set the name itself is frozen set hope you got idea of frozen set next is boolean type so let's take a type here so type of boolean boolean what uh, will take true it gives bool right so we got it cleared here and then let's type false as well it is for bool and then false is bool so binary types so basically first is bytes so this is the immutable sequence of uh, bytes so basically we can say this one bytes of hello that would be a binary type it's a bytes basically we represent again bytes uh, the character and then byte array so it's just a immutable sequence of bytes it's like a byte uh, like set of bytes you can say uh, so it's called bytes array so we call this byte array and so we can see this byte array and then memory view memory view of object of a byte type so basically uh, we'll get this one into here so we see that it is memory view so don't worry about this like these three we won't use much and the none type none type is we use some, something we use actually in coding so here uh, none type represents the absence of value so let's say you don't have any value then that is none so that is uh, plain uh, that should be capital letter first type of none is none type so yeah next is python numbers so here int represents the whole numbers right like 5 minus 3 and all so float represents the floating point number which is the maximum precision or uh, than int next is the complex so this represents the complex numbers with real and imaginary part i'm just reiterating what you learned here and then here the python casting so casting allows converting one data type to another data type so for example you can convert a string into int and integer into string so let's say string is equals to uh, 5 if it is a valid number only you can convert the string to integer so you say type of s sorry it's type i mentioned okay type of s this is string so you can actually t is equal to you can use integer of s and you can ask for type of t so it is int now so let's say you keep some like this some junk value and it will say it's not base 10 so basically it's a valid number we can convert from string to integer next is uh, we can convert the integer to float so basically here uh, we have integer one and type of x is uh, int and then we say float of x so type would be float so but this is definitely not required it's just like we are converting upper upper position that's not required so also we can convert the uh, float to integer it's just like uh, stepping down one one thing so basically in, uh, stepping on a position here so type of x is equal to float and then we can do x is equals to y is equals to int of x which is int now it is in 